fun. What is up, everybody? It is Wednesday, June 8th, 2022 AD, 9.01 a.m. U.S. Pacific Daylight Time here in Los Angeles. Going to have a fun Wednesday show, I think. Did you, well, look out for Hake on uh, Doc Studios, D-O-C Studios YouTube channel. Probably going to come out, my guess, tomorrow morning my time, which is early morning, by the way, which is Friday night New Zealand time. So you can all update the HakeReport.com slash appearances uh, blog post on that. I want to talk about them exploiting the children for the sake of gun control, so-called gun control, attack on the American freedom and the, um, our individuality and ability to be, I don't know, self-dependent, independent men who don't rely on the government to protect us. Give me a break, you know? Anyway, Matthew McConaughey, that actor... Being ridiculous. I have quite a bit about him. And a black female phony politician cover-upper, lesbian, who, next to whom Matthew McConaughey stood. I don't even know how to pronounce that guy's name. And some other mess. Fit politicians, by the way. Kirsten Gillibrand, not so fit anymore. Wow, what a mess. All that and your calls, but anyway, guys, let's get right on with the show! One, two, three, four. Oh, it's the Hake Report, the Hake Report, la la la. Oh, it's the Hake Report, the Hake Report, la la la. So, how are you guys doing? I am fine. You can call in if you're listening live, 888-775-3773. Actually, you can call in even if you're not listening live, I guess. Yesterday I had an interesting call with a lady who doesn't even listen to my show. <laughs> uh, she listens to JLP, according to her. That's nice. Um, pretty interesting. Let me get start right off, guys, I think. Oh, you know what? I, by the way, I was on a, a New Zealand show. That was kind of interesting. Yesterday, it was supposed, it was scheduled for 5 p.m. my time, which is noon tomorrow, like noon the next day, New Zealand time, with a guy from New Zealand, a liberal guy. I consider him pretty liberal. And then uh, we had to reschedule. It was going to be 8.30 my time. And then we were, he's like, no, no, I'm actually ready. Let's, let's start earlier. 7 p.m. And it was going to be like a half hour to an hour. No, it went two and a half hours. More than two and a half hours. I went on New Zealand's BHN, Big Hairy News, with a man who's uh, got a big beard. He says he's an Irish guy, Irishman. I, he says that he has, like, red hair or reddish hair. I don't know. But uh, that should be pretty fun. It, it should come out. It was pre-taped, but it's not going to be edited or anything. Uh, so you'll get the whole interview, and it'll be out maybe f- Friday night his time, which means Friday morning my time, early morning. So Doc Studios, D-O-C Studios. D-O-C is short for Department of Conversation. But he has a new show called Big Hairy News, BHN. I was talking all kinds of mess about uh, New Zealand's female prime minister, Jacinda Ardern. Ardern. And, uh, you know, the one whom I call the horsey face with the horsey teeth. <laughs> she came over to Harvard. I talked about it last Thursday, I want to say. and Maybe it was two Thursdays ago, I'm not sure. But I talked so much mess about her, calling her disgusting. Look at that face. And how embarrassing to have a female so-called prime minister. 
and she's again, you know, she's for she took away the guns after the uh, that the Muslim terror the the te- the terror the anti-Muslim terror attack in Christchurch, New Zealand. She exploited she and a bunch of blind brainwashed liberals exploited the uh, the terror attack to terrorize and take away the rights of the decent people to own and carry their own guns. What a bunch of dummies, huh? Happening all over the world in the white countries. Mass immigration into the, all the white countries. We talked about that. Including America. What a mess. Talked about so-called same-sex marriage. And he told me a little bit about the founding of New Zealand. Pretty interesting conversation. Pat Brittenden. B-R-I-T-T-E-N-D-E-N. Pat Brittenden. He's on YouTube with the Doc's stu- Doc Studios. And Twitter and elsewhere. Nice, huh? Anyway, uh, let me tell you about this phony gun control mess. They were exploiting a child again, they being the phony politicians. I saw this headline from Yahoo, so-called news, which is an extremely, extreme left, anti-American outlet. Gun violence testimony. That's not a, there's no such thing as gun violence. A fourth grade, fourth grade, nine-year-old, roughly, maybe ten, Uvalde survivor, was among witnesses giving first-hand accounts of mass shootings across the U.S. in a live House panel hearing this morning. And maybe it's still going on right now. It's afternoon over there on the east, back east over there, where the corrupt Washington, D.C. is. And you know what else is going on in Washington, D.C.? Crime spiking like by 20, violent crime spiking like by 25%. And Washington, D.C. is a very black city, very violent already. And it spiked by 25% again. Thanks, Obama. By Obama, I mean like Biden, right? How about black reform, not gun reform, right? How about the, the people reform, including everybody? Because it's not just blacks. It's just primar- it's primarily blacks. I mean, they're like leading the way by vast, vast, vast numbers on the violent crime stuff and the anger and the excuses. But we all know it is not just them. <laughs> District of Columbia. Yeah, Columbia is right. They need to spell it C-O-L-O-M-B-I-A because it might as well be like run, run by drug lords, these corrupt, disgusting people. Columbia is probably not as bad as District of Columbia, is my guess right now. I don't know. But anyway, that leads me to this guy, this grandstander. (laughs) This uh, emotional male, Matthew McConaughey. Is that how you pronounce it? McConaughey? Whatever. McCon. Con. As in a uh, confidence. Con man. Con male. It's pronounced naughty, but without the T. That's how I figured out how to remember how to spell that name. What a mess. What is he, Irish? It's not a normal white. Is that Irish? Sorry, Irish. <laughs> I'm not sorry. Uh, let me play this clip 11. This is from USA Today. USA Today. And everybody was all excited about this. I guess it was a surprise. Uh, thing. He just, he, he's a Uvalde, um, Uvalde's his birth town. He was born there. Anyway, he, uh, said, this moment is different. Matthew McConaughey, 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 urges, uh, leaders, so-called leaders to address gun violence, no such thing, in the White, in a White House speech. It was jarring, kind of odd, an odd sight to see this actor, who looks a lot like that phony Democrat, Chad-looking but total beta, Governor Gavin Newsom. You know that good-looking, tall, but dumb and cowardly 
uh, male Democrat, how embarrassing, governor of California, Gavin Newsom. He looks a lot like him to, my, to me. Similar. But here's this, here's a bunch of emotional propaganda and lies in this clip. Listen to this. We met with the local funeral director and countless morticians who, who hadn't slept since the massacre the day before. Because they've been working 24-7 trying to handle so many bodies at once. So many little innocent bodies who had their entire lives still yet to live. My day yeah, wore yeah. green high-top converse with a heart she had hand-drawn on the right toe because they represented her love of nature. Camilla's got these shoes. Can you show these shoes, please? Oh, gosh. Wore these every day. Green converse with a heart on the right toe. Look at her. Look at that. Look at that uh, White House these press secretary woman. These are the same green converse woman. Black lesbian. on her feet that turned out to be the only clear evidence that could identify her after the shooting. How about that? Whoa. Mm. <laughs> Look, is this cure all? Hell no. <laughs> the people are hurting. Families are. Parents are. And look, as is as divided as our country is, this gun responsibility issue is one that we agree on more than we don't. Nope. It really is. <laughs> Look, this should be a, a nonpartisan issue. This should not be a partisan issue. There is not a Democratic or Republican value in one single act of these shooters. It's not. That's a lie. That's a lie. Uh, thank you, USA Today, for the propaganda. You more like anti-USA Today, <laughs> Nicolas. Nick Stream, host of Nick Stream, said I liked him in this role. Thought he did a good job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice performance. Very emotional. Gave in to those emotions. I saw that, I saw that line in this Washington Compost article. There is not a, a Democratic or Republican value in one single act of these shooters. That's a lie. Of course there's Democrat values. Murder is a Democrat value. It's a fact. Look at the Democrats. I mean blacks. Of course it's a... <laughs> What movie is this from? Ask Big Bunk. Big Bunk. Murder is a Democrat value. Murder is a black value. Destruction of family. A Democrat value. Undermining Christianity is a Democrat value. And it leads to these uh, murders. Murder and anger. Democrat value. Killing the babies. Democrat value. Attack on men. Democrat value. Attack on children and misguiding uh, the children, misguided education, gun-free zones, Democrat values, Democrat false values. Of course it's Democrat value. Of course it's a partisan issue. Why do you think we're divided? Because it's, it's uh, basically it's evil versus evil, but it's good versus evil. And uh, evil will fight evil too. So it makes people think, oh, I'm fighting against, these people are evil, therefore I'm good. No, it doesn't work like that either. Let me play some more mess from uh, this this guy, Matt, whom I like, by the way. I was watching it and uh, with no audio, and I wasn't hearing or seeing the words that were coming that were coming out of his mouth. So I'm like, oh, oh, Matthew McConaughey. He's like this likable actor guy, whom everybody likes. He hasn't really been extre- excessively cringeworthy or nasty, at least. Not one of those nasty. Hollywood types, at least as far as I've been exposed, right? Which isn't uh, fairly sheltered, really. So I'm like, ah, oh, this guy's making me feel, have a soft spot for the gun grabbers. Not that he's exactly a gun grabber, but this is his message. He just gives a lot of, uh, a lot of um, lip service to other stuff, in my opinion, because he's an emotional, phony person. Here is clip twelve. A and then 12B is from CNN talking about that w- that little girl whose green Converse shoes, uh, the shoes that she, they had to use the shoes to identify her because I guess the killer Salvador Ramos shot her in the face apparently or something. Uh, 
listening to him tell this story, emotional story, it doesn't have anything to do with anything, from these, uh, the parents of this daughter, nine-year-old daughter, about her hopes and dreams dashed by Democrat values, which is murder of children. Listen to this. We also met Anna and Danilo, the mom and the stepdad of nine-year-old Maite Rodriguez. And Maite wanted to be a marine biologist. She was already in contact with Corpus Christi University of A&M for her future college enrollment, nine years old. Maite cared for the environment so strongly that when the city asked her mother if they could release some balloons into the sky in her memory, her mom said, oh, no. Maite wouldn't want to litter. Oh, this is cute. So cute, huh? Here's a little bit more from the parents of, according to him, the parents of Maite Rodriguez, nine-year-old little girl who was an environmentalist, brainwashed person. (laughs) Here it is. Maite wrote a letter. That's his wife. Mom said if Maite's letter could help someone accomplish her dream, that then her death would have an impact. And it would mean her dying had a point and wasn't pointless. No, it's pointless. Make the loss of her life matter. No. The letter. That's not how it works. Reads Marine biologist, I want to pass school to get to my dream college. My dream college is in Corpus Christi by the ocean. I need to live next to the ocean because I want to be a marine biologist. Marine biologists study animals and the water. Most of the time I will be in a lab. Sometimes I will be on TV. Aw. Apparently not. Matthew McConaughey gets to be on TV in her place. McConaughey? McConaughey. (laughs) Terrible, huh? Thanks for sharing. That had nothing to do with it. Anything. Her death meant something. Well, guess what? It didn't mean anything. It was evil. You let evil into the world, then uh, people get wasted. Kids get wasted. Thanks. Thanks, demon demon rats. Thanks, phony rhinos who are entertaining this mess. He's pretending that we're all going to be getting along. That we're not fighting evil in the world. Well, here he is again. Let me show this because he's, uh, this is from Al Jazeera English. We should kick out Al Jazeera English. U.S. actor Matthew McConaughey made an emotional plea at the White House for stricter gun control after the Uvalde school shooting in Texas. And here he shows, he shows off his wife who doesn't have his last name. Or maybe she does, but I don't know. It's confusing. What a mess. Uh, she kept her maiden name thing because she's a model or something like that. Uh, he shows off those shoes again. Here it is. Listen to this. Clip 13. Maite wore green high-top converse with a heart she had hand-drawn on the right toe because they represented her love of nature. Camilla's got these shoes. Can you show these shoes, please? Wore these every day. Green converse. With a Latino heart wife. On the right toe. These are the same green converse on her feet that turned out to be the only clear evidence that could identify her after the shooting. How about that? We need to save the schools. I think he cussed. We need to restrain sensationalized media coverage. Yeah. We need to restore our family values. We need to restore our American values. And we need responsible gun ownership. Responsible Man, that's gun a- ownership. We need background checks. We need to raise the minimum age to purchase an AR-15 rifle to 21. No. Nope. We need a waiting period for those rifles. We need red nope. flag laws and nope. consequences for those who abuse them. Whatever, man. These are reasonable, practical, tactical 
regulations <laughs> to our nation, states, communities, schools, and homes. What a phony, huh? That's from Al Jazeera English. What a, what a, what a term, huh? What a brainwashing rhetoric term. Responsible gun ownership. Responsible gun ownership. Oh, let me play this last part. Somebody asked him if he's grandstanding. This is clip 14. After, you, after Matthew McConaughey's heart-wrenching speech, writes Justin Barragona, who looks crazy, uh, media reporter for the far-left extremist anti-American outlet Daily Beast, his heart-wrenching and his impassioned speech about Uvalde and guns from the White House podium, one of the reporters, reporters asks, Are you grandstanding? <laughs> Uh, and then some woman is like, I don't know who asked that, but that was a powerful speech. I think it was Katie Turr. Is it Katie Turr, the daughter of the, of the transgender uh, Bob Turr? I don't know. Uh, she's the one who's like an anti-Trump lady. And I use the term lady kind of loosely. Mildly attractive. Here's, a, here's this MSLSD, MSDNC clip. Uh, clip 14. JC, Jayla, Ava, Amory, uh, and Lexi. Sorry, too loud. Start by giving all of them our promise that their dreams are not going to be forgotten. Uh, we start by making the loss of these lives matter. What's that even mean? Sir, thank you. 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 Please go to the president. Are the changes that are being discussed enough for you? Please go with your message to the president. I'm not sure who just asked him if he was grandstanding, but um, that was some powerful words from Matthew McConaughey there. And I just want to note that uh, we were in that live for the duration CNN was, and so was Fox News. So was Fox News. What does that mean, powerful words? How, is that, how are those words powerful? Powerful in what way? Emotionally pulling? Pull on your emotions? Was just told by another reporter in the room that it was James Rosen of Newsmax who asked, he said that asked, but it's properly said who asked whether McConaughey was grandstanding. But this guy says we need to invest in mental health care. Yeah, give that to the liberals to mess that up even worse. Because that just means government employees and government funding of corrupt psychologists and psychiatrists who don't do any good for anybody, really. Safer schools. Restrain sensationalized media coverage. Well, then you should not have been sensationalizing this, in my opinion. We need to restore our family values, says the guy whose wife doesn't even have his, or does he have his, does she have his name? It doesn't look like she had his name. And by the way, he had three kids before he, he, well, at least she was pregnant, the, the last with the third kid, before he married her. This guy, I looked it up. <laughs> He's, uh, his wife is Brazilian model Camila Alves. They spent most of last week with the victim's families, and I use families in quotation marks because I'm not sure how much they were married. Some, in some cases, yeah. In, uh, in Uvalde. You know what every one of these parents wanted, what they asked us for? Oh, Corrine Jean-Pierre called her Camilla McConaughey. Okay, all right, that's nice. Maybe I take that part back. But it's lip service to the family values thing. Because he's pushing for the gun control stuff. Because he's a sucker. You know what every one of these parents wanted what they asked us for? Like they should have any say in what goes on. What every parent separately asked in their own way to Camilla and me. They wanted their children's dreams to live on. Whatever that means. They wanted to make their loss of life matter. And I say to quote... uh, what is that? What is that Bible book? Ecclesiastes? Meaningless. Especially with these godless liberals. And this guy's a non denominational Christian, but the people who raise these uh, people to act like this. And uh, 
they took prayer out of the schools and they messed up, uh, the homes are all messed up. And they're subsidizing single mothers. And they're shutting down the uh, world. Expectations for a quick deal on the anti-2A legislation were fading on Tuesday. So this guy came over on what? Yeah, that was today. Responsible gun owners are fed up with Second Amendment being abused and hijacked by some deranged individuals, McConaughey said. These regulations are not a step back. They're a step forward for our civil society. We're not civilized. We've taken away the civilization. He met with rhinos and Democrat lawmakers to discuss gun control. He met with Sleepy Joe before stepping into the White House briefing room. And this White House briefing room, I will remind you, is Sleazy Joe's White House. So this guy's in cahoots with them. He's helping them. With the radical black lesbian press secretary, Kareen Jean-Pierre. Who said the actor wanted to use his platform to deliver a message about so-called common sense gun measures. They don't have common sense. Lawmakers, he said, have a window of opportunity to exploit emotional females so that they can now pass meaningful gun control changes. He called for a creation of a waiting period for purchasing AR-15 rifles. Why? Raising the minimum age for purchasing that type of weapon to 21. Why? Oh, yeah, let's keep, let's keep males not responsible. Let's pretend that they, they're, ne- they're not responsible enough to go out on their own until 26 so we can subsidize their health care by way of their parents. He also called for universal background checks and red flag laws, meaning take away the guns of the people without having committed any crime, without any due process, and background checks so we have information on, on you guys, on the sensible, decent people, right? Gun responsibility. What a word, huh? Such a brainwashing term. Gun sense. Gun safety. Gun responsibility. These people are not sensible. They're not safe. And they're not responsible. The people pushing for this stuff. And he went on Brett Baer's show on, the, uh, on Fox News. said, the consensus word I'm hearing in the phrase is that this is different. There are some more momentum. Some lawmakers on the right are willing not to not staunchly say no to some of these things. On the left, they're willing to say, you know, we may want the whole loaf, but okay, we'll take a slice of bread. This is a novel thing happening right now. So he went back to his hometown in the wake of the shooting, right? And it was all shocking. You could feel the pain, the denial, the disillusion, anger, blame, sadness, loss of lives, dreams halted, he said. That's, that's a good emotional state to be in, to make a decision on what to do. Not. Showed artifacts of the slain children, a drawing by one victim, Alethea. Alethea. <laughs> what the heck? It's supposed to be Alethea? I don't know, but they ca- said Alethea. Must be Peruvian, right? Which, which ones are the ones who have this, the, uh, the lisp? You know those Spanish speakers with the lisp? They don't use their S's, they say th- I don't know, but it's what it reminded me of. Is it the Peruvians? Somebody tell me. No offense, Peruvians. Ten-year-old who had visions of going to school in Paris, showing uh, herself. And it's girls. What the heck? Girls? Who have these big dreams? What about the boys? Telling about about little girls. Little girls are all propped up too much, in my opinion. Uh, You know, the... Fake marine biologist Maite Rodriguez, who had the green converse with the heart on one toe, who, whose shoes his wife was carrying, cared for the environment. Anyway, and uh, Washington Compost co- called this woman Alves. So Karine Jean-Pierre may have been giving fake news, calling Camilla Alves, Camilla McConaughey, because Corinne Jean-Pierre wants to pretend like, like they're more traditional than they actually are. He had three kids out of wedlock. Well, two, and then a shotgun marriage after the third got, the third pregnancy. <laughs> anyway, this is the woman who was next to whom this guy was standing, by the way. This is clip 15, and then I'll get to calls. We're at half, power, half past the hour. 
Matthew stood next to this woman, Matthew Mc- McConaughey. Clip 15, this is from uh, Twitter, Art Valley 818 underscore. You know, that guy who posts a bunch of viral clips. Said that she thinks we're s- stupid or she, oh, she's stupid. Talking about the bad economy. Peter, is it Peter Ducey? You know, the Fox News guy confronted her about, everybody knows that the economy is bad, and then she does her fast-talking thing, taking after that red-haired lady who preceded her to fast-talk her way out of admitting the truth. Listen to this mess from Karine Jean-Pierre, Biden's secretary. 83% of people polled by the Wall Street Journal say the economy is poor or not so good. So when it comes to consumer confidence, is what you're talking about there, we know that uh, can reflect concern and uncertainty uh, about higher prices. People feel the effect of high prices uh, when they go to the grocery store and they feel they're up their gas gas tank, which the president understands uh, very personally when he was uh, growing up and understanding how uh, how when prices elevate uh, even just a bit, how much that can hurt a family, how much that can uh, really uh, affect uh, uh, you know uh, someone's uh, house. Uh, 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 but the fact is we are in a fundamentally different place compared to when the president took office and compared to this time a year ago. And so, you know, during this president, during his pre- this presidency, people felt uncertainty, uncertain about the economy generally, but they actually felt as good about their personal financial situation as they ever have, according to the Federal Reserve Survey, with nearly 80 percent of adults reporting that they are financially comfortable. So that matters as, as well. What a phony woman, huh? I'm just annoyed. I'm annoyed. (laughs) What a disgusting, obnoxious, conceited person. Can we get men back on the stage having to defend this liar again? Ridiculous. Let me get to a call or two, guys. You can call in 888-775-3773. Just a whole bunch of words. Let me get to... uh, caller Richard in San Francisco, California, on the line. How are you doing, Richard? Doing all right, man. How are you doing? Doing fine, thank you. Hey, so yesterday you had a caller about uh, he was upset about transvestites at a bar, and there was kids there, and they were almost stripping, and how they need to have laws against transvestites. Is that dude serious? Yeah, you don't think that there should be, uh, I mean, I think that there probably no. are obscenity laws that we just aren't enforcing. My question is, why would you take a kid to a bar? Ask the parents, Doesn't I don't know. Doesn't that seem like not kid-friendly? Right. Bunch of drunk alcoholics? Seems like... Going to a bar? Well, the alcoholics is a secondary, really, to the discu- disturbing so, disgustingness so my question is, of the... What? Family values parent would take their kid to a bar. Well, I heard you the first time, man. I told you ask the parents. So, ask the parent. So let's ask the parent that's offended that they took their kid to a bar to see transvestites. What? You took them. What are you talking about? I don't get it. I don't think so that you real. I don't think you understood what was going on. I don't think it was parents who took their kids. To a venue, the cops called it a venue. I don't think those parents are the ones who were offended. I may be mistaken. Why is he offended? Why? Why is who offended? Why was the caller offended to begin with? Because it's disgusting and uh, disturbing and perverted to put to do that and put that in front of kids. So you know what you do? You don't take your kid. Oh, very good, Richard. Very good. That's dumb. You don't, you don't take your kids to something, or you don't tell another parent what to do with their kid. Yes, you do. Whether their kid could be, whether their kid could be transitioning, or whether their kid could be curious. It's like parents are too lazy to talk about it, so you would rather outlaw. It. That's dumb. You want to make any you, sense? You want to outlaw? You want to outlaw someone's freedom of speech because you're not okay with That's it? That's not speech, dude. Expression is a form of speech. No, it's not. So whether they are transitioning. Obs- obscenity sure, obscenity sure and all that stuff is not speech. 
So when you go to a strip club, I, did you just reference the Constitution? Girl, did I? Yeah. Yes, the form of freedom of speech. No, it's expression. not. Freedom of expression. Freedom of expression. Freedom of speech. Being so all sexual, it has top, nothing to do with the freedom of speech. Being all sexual is what? Were they flaunting their nudity in front of kids? They were flaunting something. They were half naked. What were they flaunting? They were half naked. So they weren't yeah. naked at all. What's half naked? Richard, would you take your kid there? If I don't, if I don't want my kid there, no. Answer I'm my question. Them. Would you take your kid there? Would I? Yeah. If they were transitioning or curious, why the hell not? Wow, that's a, that would be considered child abuse by sensible people. Why would it be child abuse? Because you're exposing them to uh, public obscenity. You know, nine-year-olds right now have access to the internet. I'm pretty sure they are getting. Everything that you don't talk about. So one wrong justifies. Around their head. So, so one wrong justifies another. Having a parent no, enable I'm that just not, I'm just justifies not that. In your in your kid from the in real your, world. In your twisted mind, and that's not real. Nothing real about it. No, it's in your real. twisted it's mind. In front of you. I know that's it doesn't real. mean that it's real. Those are not real people. No, it is real. Yeah. What do you think? It's make believe. That it doesn't go on. That's only in some. I said it, it goes on, no, but that's not, that's, that's not the real world. That's the real world. Sorry, no, it's dude. not the real it's world, happened. man. You you don't have. They're to living an evil illusion. Happen. You just mentioned questioning, evil. transgender, transitioning. Those aren't real things. That's an illusion. Yeah, it no, it's not. <laughs> no, it's real. No, it nobody. Happening. Not one person has changed from male to female or female to male. Not one. No, I'm not saying that they could change from male to female. You just said do. transitioning. I'm saying that it's real, that it goes it's on. It's not that real. It's happens. That's the real world. The, the evil and the delusion goes on. Just because you don't agree with it doesn't mean it doesn't exist. I know, but the e- but it's a delusion. It's not real. Does it still happen? Are people still doing it? People are pretending to do it. Pretending or not, does it still happen? Does what still happen? People, we'll use your analogy. People still think that they can transition. So they still go through the process of transitioning. They still do all the changes. So are you saying And you would take your kid to that. Would I? If yeah. they're curious and want to know? I don't think. <laughs> as a parent, I'm not going to shield it from them. You're a parent. You're not a father. Doesn't matter. Parent, father. If, if no, my you're, kid no a father would not do that. If my kid comes up to me tomorrow and says, Dad, I no longer want to be a girl. I want to be a boy. Okay, live your life. What do you want me to do? I'm not going to love him any less. You don't love him at all. Why? Because you're not a father. Okay. You, you, don't know how you, to guide father? Your, you don't know how to guide your parents. Are you I mean, your a children. father? Do you have kids of your own? No. Why, why does that matter? Okay, so why would you tell somebody who you don't even have kids? which means you can't quantify love at this point. Yes, I can. About how much you love a child or how much you love your There is no your much. Child. You either no, love, no, or, you saying, either love what, your you child or you don't. Or something? You either do love my child. What's the you point? either love your child or you don't. If you don't love so your child, you go I, along with their delusion. I agree with my child and I love my child no matter what path they choose. That's not love. That is love. No, it isn't. You love your person unconditionally. No, it isn't. Because you hold up that book you call a Bible that says love someone unconditionally. No, it, there is no sudden, unconditional. Now, supposed, there is no word there, unconditional in the Bible. There are some stipulations on that, right? There is no unconditional in the Bible. And, it, and pretending to go along with s- some kid who's brainwashed into the LGBT delusion is not love. I don't. You know, you know who a man who loves his child no matter what his child did? Magic Johnson. We're talking about him yesterday. <laughs> Still loves his son he, today as much as he did the day before. You want to show that Good picture? Good for Magic Johnson. You think that this is love? This don't put it in. Don't put it in from the wrong folder, though. <laughs> Crash the thing. So you think Magic Johnson loves his son? If his son, if he loved his son, his son wouldn't be the way that he is. EJ. E. EJ. Need it out of him. Uh, that's a false dilemma, buddy. So he should beat it out of him? What? He should that, that's what you would do? That, is that what you would do? 
I don't believe in corporal punishment to begin with when it comes to raising your child. This is what this guy thinks is love. Magic Johnson holding his son's waist and his son dressed up like a woman. Sorry, kids, this is really vulgar. Who cares? It's not your son. I'm putting uh, Richard on hold. This is what Richard from San Francisco thinks is love. Magic Johnson loves his son unconditionally. This is what unconditional quote-unquote love does to a kid. Where this kid grows up to be 30, zero dignity, dressed up like a woman, fat, unhappy, looks like a garish version of his mother, I guess. That's what Richard thinks is love. No one, I can tell you're from San Francisco, Richard. Yeah, I am. Why? Because uh, you have a degenerate, false idea of what love is. So I'm a degenerate because I wouldn't hate my kid for being who he is? First of all, that's not who he is. And second, I never said... No, that is who I, he is. Second, I never said beating. Oh, oh I, he I should murder his son? son? Yes. <laughs> I know, huh? What I a, said beat his son, which means... Which no, nobody ever said beating. You're, that's your... So how sick do you mind. Change, That's yeah, your how sick do you change, imagination. How do you change Magic Johnson's son so he could be your quote unquote normal? I don't know. I'm not. I'm not Magic Johnson, so I don't know. I don't. You're I didn't see the son. You're not either, right? No. Okay, so your opinion doesn't really matter when it comes to rearing a child. If my opinion didn't matter, why would you be calling me? Oh, I had a. I had a call because of another somebody else that called I know in. but you're arguing with me like like my opinion matters but you're and then you're turning around no, and no, saying no. that it my opinion doesn't matter technically doesn't matter because oh no it matters somebody else who raises their kid no so no you, no so it if matters I'm raising my kid wrong oh, what are you gonna do come up to me and say you're raising that kid wrong you're probably gonna get punched in the face because it's none of your business how I raise my kid right not necessarily sometimes some what? stuff so, crosses the line into remember, our business you're so when you have a degenerate this show is so, when, so when you have a when you have a degenerate society that pushes this stuff on kids i think it makes it I'm, the men of the town's business saying, not to be how, to how at least say something at least say something how is are you evil go to another father i'm not I'm sorry not another father another man you're making up an imaginary scenario himself. richard you realize are you, gonna say you realize to you're him? making up an imaginary scenario I'm just you got all that alphabet. Are you going to go up to another father and tell him you're raising that kid wrong? I have no idea because you're making up an imaginary scenario. We're dealing with reality. Reality is, that is those reality. kids went into that uh, venue and had disgusting uh, displays, and you yes. would do that to your kid if, if your you kid was like misguided. It, don't go. It's not about not going. It's about not allowing it in okay, the first then, place. Okay, then it's not about should you be upset that somebody else took their kids to it. And I don't know how much that guy is upset. He's just saying it's wrong. Oh, he was very upset because he says there should be laws against them. That's, you don't have to be upset. You don't have to be upset to say that there should be laws against obscenity, which oh, there he, are okay, laws on so the books against obscenity. Upset, so he wants to create laws for certain people. Did you know so that, that there are already laws against obscenity? These are not certain people. These people have okay, already what special privileges. Do transvestites do, or should we say cross dressers? What laws are posted against them? It's obscene. What? It's obscene. You dressed as a woman? Yes. That's obscene. In public? Yep, that's Where? obscene. What state? Many states. Look it up if you're no, so interested. Not many states, because I guarantee you, if you're arrested for wearing a dress as a man, you're not going to get arrested. Um, you should be, because uh, it's, oh, it's a so sign of mental that illness. People should be arrested because you don't agree with. Them. No, no, it's uh, it is a, it is obscene, and it's a sign of uh, mental illness. Do you get mad when you see your local mailman wearing two shorts of shorts? No, because I don't live in San Francisco where that happens, dude. But I'm, I'm, not, a, I'm not a sicko. Mostly in Georgia, I hear. Okay, I, I guess if you're into that, I know that Atlanta is the second gay capital of, uh, of uh, the United States behind so San Francisco. we established that Georgia has a very large gay population. Atlanta. There's no such thing as gay, but it's like the, one of the so-called gay capitals of the world. 
What a mess, huh? So we'll say men that like men and women that like women. Their population is pretty high. In, Let in me Georgia. bring in. Do you want to talk with this caller who uh, called in yesterday? Do I? Yeah. No, I don't need to. Okay. Goodbye, Richard. I mean, if you want, if you goodbye, want Richard. Him online, goodbye, Richard. Put him on. No, no. You said you don't want to. No, I said go ahead and put him on. No, you said you don't I have want no to. No problem talking to him. All right, Either let me see. You want to put him on, or you don't. Joe in Idaho, do you want to defend yourself against oh, Richard in Idaho. San Francisco? No, he's from Portland. Yeah, actually, sure. he's from Portland originally, Richard. Well, so. no, I'm originally from Buffalo, New York, but oh, now okay. I live in Idaho. Yeah, by way of Portland. But yeah. So, Richard, uh, first of all, when you're saying that people should not get involved in other uh, in, in in other people's uh, how they raise their kids. What about if you see some parent abusing their kid, like beating their kid, or if you have their another kid, ideology, not get involved? When, you, when you see somebody getting abused, that's fine. But just because you don't agree with someone else's ideology and how they raise their kids, that's none of your business. Well, what if their what if their ideology kids, is that it's what if their ideology is that it's acceptable to rape their children, let's say, or beat their children? That's their ideology. So the, so the laws that we already have against sex crimes against children, those don't matter anymore. Is that what you're saying? Because someone else's ideology no, based no, on that's not what I'm saying. That it's hypothetical okay. what I'm saying. Based on, I'm using your logic against you. You're using my logic to think that somehow that people who rape children is going to make me say, oh, yeah, you should leave them alone. Because that's what no, you because what you're saying is that you should not get involved in how other people raise their kids. I don't think you I'm should get saying... involved with people who think that if they take their kids to a trans, either a transvestite reading to them in the library or them taking them to a cross-dressing show, for some reason that's so wrong because of it's <laughs> immoral in your eyes. Why do you care? It's, it's hard to business. believe that you're actually a I grown care. adult male. Richard? With a kid, by the way. I know. Crazy, um, right? Go, but you know that there are uh, obscenity laws on the books. So there are, just like what? there are laws against what? rape, those, there are laws against obscenity. People, and they're not enforced. The they're not enforced because the people breaking those obscenity laws are by and large the LGBT people and the females. Did anybody get arrested? No, that, because they that, don't they because they don't they enforce been. obscenity laws. They should enforce so nobody them. Nobody got arrested. Though. Well, then it's, they're not breaking the law. Sorry, they are nobody breaking the law. Just because they don't get arrested Where? doesn't mean okay. they're not breaking the, thing, the law. So you want to be mad because the cops didn't act on this? Show? It's not about mad, Richard. Joe in Idaho. It Joe in Idaho. Talk sense. some sense into him. Okay, so Richard, your logic does not make sense. First of all, what was Basically, happening you're in, mad that, in that? Else Hold on, Richard. Richard. Okay, Richard. let me talk, Richard. Let me speak. What was happening in that bar crossed the line. Okay, it wasn't just I'm just someone reading a story. It was a. It was essentially a strip tease type of thing. It was burlesque, completely inappropriate for children. It was highly sexualized. There was a neon sign on on the wall that said, "It's not going to lick itself." That is not appropriate for children. Okay? So it's okay. crossed so the line. Bad move by Nobody the got arrested. But still, it ain't got nothing to do with you. It I'm does, sorry, because we're men, we're men of the uh, community who look out for... Men of the community who look trying out to tell for another in, parent what For enforcing, enforcing the, uh, the obscenity laws that affirmative action, de facto affirmative action... Let's L the LGBT vulgar people get away with breaking those obscenity laws. Man, I live in San Francisco. There's a transvestite what on every street corner, every block. Just every because bar. it's just because you see it on every corner doesn't mean it's not uh, a breaking the law. It's not breaking the law. You don't know that. There is no. You don't even know. You, don't even, no you never even heard of I, obscenity laws. There is no law in San Francisco stating that a person that is transvestite should be arrested for crossdressing. I don't know. It also used to be legal in San Francisco no to walk around 100% naked. Men used to walk around with their genitalia hanging out naked wow. in San Francisco. That used to be legal. Just a few years Probably ago. Probably still is because during, during the Beta Breaker run, people are running naked through it. 
Yeah, and they're Not breaking one the law. Been but it's as of a few years ago, it it became illegal to do. Uh, however, and children would see it. Children would would see that. Is, was that okay? okay? In your opinion? Okay. Don't take your kid. No, answer it. the question. Is that okay it? in your opinion? Is, is it okay? Sure. I don't care. <laughs> I oh would not God. take my this kid guy is a degenerate. to yeah. I didn't agree with. He really is. But again, you guys are in your so alphaness, want to be so alpha to tell other people what to do when all the time you do beta moves by crying about it so much. No, you you're crying. Beta, you're coming on my alpha. show crying about us crying. You're the one who's beta, beta, beta. So I'm basically telling yeah. you that you're <laughs> we're two peas in a pot because we're both being betas and crying about the situation. Well, you speak that you for yourself. No control. Speak Richard, for yourself, Richard. Not you, you don't caring about what happens to children is not being a beta, and it's not crying. No, you it's are caring about beta because you said children. there should be laws against these transvestites. Why? I didn't because say you don't that. Agree with it? That is not what I you said. You're putting there words into my mouth. Laws. I said there should That's be laws exactly against taking said. children to sex, highly sexualized uh, drag shows. That's nice. what I said, okay? People take their kids to rated R movies. Literally, they shouldn't. That's actually said, that's wrong. What? You can't take your kids That's to a wrong. rated R movie? Richard, just, Richard is just going to justify everything just by bringing up other wrong stuff that happens. What a mess, huh? Oh, yeah, Richard it's, doesn't it's understand so wrong. Logic. You took your kids to go see Terminator 2. So much violence. <laughs> Terminator 2, 19, 1992, something like that. I was nine years old. 1991? 1990? Was Terminator 2 rated R? Uh, yeah, it was. Uh, and some it of was. my friends watched it. I never watched it until I was an adult. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. T2, you Judgment Day. Life. Oh, I know, and you're so offended by it. You're so offended, aren't you? By what? Having, having a sheltered life, not having kids, and then trying to tell somebody else they don't love their kids. Yeah, this is America. Because this is America. Because, I have the freedom of yeah, speech. Just because you don't have kids, Richard, just because a person doesn't have children doesn't mean they can't recognize abuse happening to children and speak out against it. No, them. I'm, I'm saying just yep. because Nothing he wrong doesn't have that. children doesn't mean he doesn't know how somebody else should love their own kid. They don't, they don't understand the dynamics of the relationship. <laughs> I can, so why I can recognize world, abuse. What, recognize abuse? If a kid is getting beat, yeah. beat up in the middle of a parking lot by a parent, you're going to step in. There's more than one kind of abuse, Richard. So yeah. you think he, people are mentally abusing their kids because he, their kids come up to them and say, why are two men kissing? Yes. Or why, why can that man, dressed as a well, woman, go into the woman's bathroom? And then the parent misleading the kid like that? Yes, that's abuse. It's not misleading. Okay, look, yeah. if you have one bathroom in the house and a girl and a boy use it, how do you explain to your kid that that's not the same thing as going as a trans? Richard, you're bringing in other it. topics. You make We're no sense, Richard. We're talking about taking children. It makes perfect about taking sense. You're mad that that man went into the bathroom. You're mad that trans. Hold on, like hold on, Richard. Joe is talking. What? You want to put him on a... Joe, ahead. Go ahead, Joe. Last point. Okay. Uh, Richard, you're, ta- you're bringing in other topics. Right now, we're talking about taking children to what was essentially a strip tease show uh, a burlesque show that was highly sexualized, where children were encouraged to put dollar bills or give dollar bills to these people that were w- scantily clad, <laughs> and uh, there was all kinds of sexual things happening there. It, that's completely inappropriate. That's what we're talking about. Okay, stay on topic. You don't like it, don't take your kid. If you don't like it, don't take your kid. Very, res- don't very responsible. Don't raise their kid. Very Richard, adult. your logic is, is ridiculous because okay, that's like saying issue. if you don't like someone don't, beating their kids, then don't don't speak up about it. Yeah. Well, thank you guys. There's a difference between physical abuse and what you're saying. And the sexual kid has abuse. Questions about <laughs> All right. And has questions about gay people. What are you going to do? Shelter him for the rest of his if life? If they have oh, questions, yeah, you don't take him to a gay bar, dude. I got to go though. Take care, guys. I pr- appreciate it, it Joe. Bar? Okay. All right. Bye. Take care, Richard. Later. Bye. (laughs) What a mess.
Oh, man. Let me get to Alex in Sweden on the line. How are you doing, Alex? I'm doing well, Hake. Nice. Um, just want to say real fast uh, to these uh, guys who call, uh, not guys, but one of those beta males, uh, Richard, I believe. Yeah. What are you What are you arguing about, Richard? What is wrong with you? It's plain <laughs> and simple. You don't take your kids to these kind of places. What, what do you... I mean, to, to me, uh, I'm just going to say it right, uh, plain and simple. That's a pedophile. That's a scumbag. Yeah. That Richard guy. That's a scumbag. I would, as a man, you can. I don't know if he's in that. that. It's okay. I wouldn't. Uh, I don't know. No, I don't know. no, 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 no. I, 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 no. I believe. It's very perverted, that though. You cannot ask. No, but seriously, okay. Um, okay. I'm sorry to. No, go um, ahead. Go ahead. Putting it. To me, a real man or a real father would not say that it's okay to, you know, to take a kid or a child to these kind of places where right. this kind of degenerate behavior is going on. I mean, for example, uh, me, I'm 39. I kind of refuse to speak to people who are under 20 because I'm like, you know, um, it's, I just don't get it. I don't have children, but I don't get the concept of that. How do you not? Why can't you see this thing that children, adults, the wrong things going on? Children don't belong there. What the part of it don't you understand? I mean, and what did you mean example, by you? Uh, what did I you say? You said you don't talk to, you don't talk to people who are under twenty. Yeah. What do you mean yeah. by that? I mean, it's like. Are you talking about uh, talking to it? girls under twenty, or just talking to anybody under twenty? What do you mean by talking to them? Like most, mostly females. Oh, okay. Most females. Yeah, because it's so easy to get things get misunderstood, and oh, a lot okay. Of them so you don't want them, and, and, yeah, because they'll think that you're coming on to them, or and start accusing you of trying to be like that. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And in the end, their word weighs more than mine. So yeah. yeah. True. But, but, what but, a mess, huh? You have anyway. to protect yourself in that way. Especially men have to protect themselves. Yeah. That's yeah, why I don't. I, that's I, why I, I don't that. like throwing people throwing around the word pedophile because they accuse all men of that type of stuff now. But you're I, right. I, I you're right. The attack is on. I, I, I accept, man. I accept. Uh, but, uh, yeah, it was just plain and simple. Uh, what I wanted to say is that children are children, and they should not be. I mean. I believe that people who are for this kind of degenerate things, which involves kids, there's something wrong with them. I think they they have this kind of, you know, some kink or something, and they they you're just using these things as an excuse to just you know get yeah. something out of it. Because another thing that is kind of worrying is that if you watch, uh, I've seen these videos on TikToks, you know, where you see these degenerate uh, so-called mothers filming their child and saying they're uh, most of the time boys. And they say to them, are you a girl? And the, the boy is like, no. To me, they look like hostages. Yeah, I know, huh? So, yeah, yeah these me, mothers are so, so to me, oppressive to the kids. Yeah, to me, yeah, to me, to me, these kind of parents are the new terrorists for the children, actually. Yeah. Because, yeah, they're, they're terrorizing their children with all these these kind of, crap i don't understand because when i grew up i don't remember that i the, all i knew that about my teachers for example was their names that's all i knew but the things you see now that the, the most know. of the teachers are doing it's they're, like they're coming wow, out as lesbians wow. and gays to their children i talked about some florida kindergarten male teacher who said oh i have to keep my my kindergartner uh, students at arm's length. I can't tell them about my life because of this new uh, so-called "Don't Say Gay" bill. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. What are you talking they, they, about? They, They're supposed I, I, to be further than arm's length, buddy. <laughs> anyway, oh, sorry. No, no. I was talking about this guy, this uh, kindergarten teacher. Uh, yeah, wanted okay, to tell okay, how he's okay. how he's gay to the kids. So sick. Ah, uh, hey, you know. Uh, I don't know what's going to happen in the future, but let's hope that someone uh, like 
Trump or Trump wins next time, and immediately they should, you know, arrest all these people. They, they belong in jail. Every single one of them, they belong in jail. <laughs> uh, yeah, in many cases, you are right, man. It's build back the closet, says uh, Canadian David. Yeah. Anyway, Alex, I yeah. appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you so much for taking my call, and uh, you have a good day, sir. All right. You as well. Take care. Guys, we're at the top of the hour. It's time for some music, which I do disavow, the hidden cameras. This is, uh, I don't know if I want to call, mention, oh yeah, Day is Dawning. That's not so bad of a name, of a name of a song, but uh, don't listen to the lyrics, guys. I'll be right back for, the, for hour two. Have uh, some other things to cover. Including a scary orangutan. <laughs> and uh, hopefully I'll get to Christian Gillibrand. Is she fit or no? But, and your calls, guys. But for now, the hidden cameras. See you soon. There's a new- Venice Beach, Huntington. Mullins sounds rough these days. He got in a Jeep accident, right?
Hey, teachers, leave those kids alone. Nice song. Let's jam. Beautiful day at the beach. This same song made Richard act like that. <laughs> so good. Hidden cameras seems creepy. It is. Repeating things. That's how you know it's satanic. Where's your curve? Says Black Sabbath. <laughs> well, thank you guys for bearing with me through that wonderful music. Let's read a few super chats, shall we? Quite a lot, actually. Um, let's see. Do, do, do. Uh, Commander Kim over there on Odyssey, O-D-Y-S-E-E dot com slash at The Hake Report. McConaughey's lifelong lawyer slash liar, who he acknowledges made his career, is Kevin Morris. Morris is now representing Hunter, Hunter Biden, and infiltrated a crew making a documentary about Hunter crimes. Kevin Morris is also the person who loaned Hunter the money to get out of trouble with the IRS. What lawyer loans a client money? Wow, Commander Kim. Interesting. Look into that if, uh, I don't know if that's true or not, but thank you, Commander Kim. Honda Bear with the Super Chat says, If I saw Richard taking his kid to a drag bar, I would call CPS, Child Protective Services, on him. Unfortunately, Child Protective Services are a bunch of liberals now who are... No good for the children either, by and large. John WX25 <laughs> says about uh, Matthew McConaughey's, the actor's gun control speech, a touching speech, made me want to spit. When's his speech in Chicago, L.A., Detroit, St. Louis, and the rest of the demon rat cities? Here's an idea. More prisons? Commit a crime with a weapon, it's 15, and second off is life without... Murder is death penalty. Interesting. Lord Bibby42 says, Hey, I got money saying <laughs> Richard goes number one sitting down. He said a different word. John WX25 says, Be careful, Hey, Richard might hit you with a he, she's purse or high heels. Bet he, she loves the. <laughs> I can't say that out loud, man. But anyway, thank you, John WX25. Um, Max Rex says, Hey, such bitterness, disdain, and femininity in Richard's voice when he asks slash yells, Why? What kind of parent exposes their young kids to the evils of the world anyway? Richard isn't alpha enough to watch and love T2, Terminator 2, one of the best movies in cinema history. Not for kids, though. Great film, says Chris. Yeah. Hey, I missed most of the first half of the show. Did you mention the 55th anniversary of the USS Liberty? January, I mean, June 8th. 8th, 19. What was it, 67? Is it 67, 55 years ago, something like that? Yeah, June 8th, 1967, the USS Liberty Incident, Incident is what Wikipedia calls it, where our greatest ally showed their true bond with us, says Brandon M. That's when Israel attacked the USS Liberty, which was an American ship. They claimed it, they confused it with uh, some Egyptian ship, but it didn't really look like it could be confused for an Egyptian ship. Some said that it was on purpose. Many of the survivors of the USS Liberty, many of them died. Um, 34 killed, 171 wounded, one ship heavily damaged. 
but it didn't sink. Crazy. Shenanigans. Um, <laughs> Richard is in the, went into the YouTube chat. He's usually in the Facebook chat. He's like, "Aw, morality police. Please, sorry if you don't like trans. Sorry they don't exist. <laughs> uh, the snark. Gotta love it. Anyway, uh, thank you, Super Chatters. I think that's everything. Indeed. And shout out to Noah's Art Kansas. Thanks for the Super Chat yesterday. That was cool. Uh, let me tell you about this uh, s- funny story that I came across. I don't have the video for it. You'll probably see the video on the Jason Lee Peterson show. But I saw this. Uh, it was a tip from um, Denny in Bulgaria. He called my show, I think, yesterday, first thing, and told me about this. And it was covered by this guy, Clyde Do Something, on YouTube, YouTube channel. Crazy HR lady will get you fired. Open threats from HR, and he called her a Karen. I think, I don't think that's her real first name. I think that's just the slur, the anti-white slur. K-word to smear the white ladies. Tammy and twins on TikTok. Tammy and twins on TikTok. Don't harass her, though, guys. (laughs) You know what to do, Brandon M. (laughs) Scotchy Poli. Uh, shared this video of her, and she's all talking under her breath, and she's like, apparently, on, on looking at her phone, so she's like looking at herself, so like she's looking down from the camera. The camera's up here, and she's looking down. So she's like, <laughs> if I can do the crazy eyes, there she is. Oh my gosh, what in the world? And these people think they're on the right side of history. Some friendly HR advice, this lady says, and so she's bragging under her breath. I don't know where she is that she has to talk under her breath, but it makes it all the more creepy sounding, this woman. Um, Talking about how she would, you know, if you're an anti-vaxxer or conservative and you're posting your views on social media, well, just a bit of advice, she says, don't post it on social media because HR departments run the companies, not these male CEOs. And HR departments are run by angry women, she said. Angry women. And we hate you. (laughs) Talk about hate, huh? And she's all cussing up a storm and being nasty and says, uh, we don't agree with you. And if you want to be hired or want to not be fired or want to be rehired, That might not happen. (laughs) Crazy lady. Crazy lady. HR departments. Very corrupt. And they work in these commie capitalist corporations, right? And they are anti-white, anti-men, anti-Christian, anti-anti-vax. You know, if you're not for the masks or the the forced vaccinations. These females want to micromanage your life and not want to have you be free. Say you don't like... uh, These, uh, drag shows in front of kids, better not post that on social media. These angry HR ladies will get you not rehired. So there was, it went viral and it made the rounds among the conservatives. And it's funny because she said, watch what you post on social media, but she didn't watch what she posted on social media because not everybody's on board with that type of at least open honesty about what the liberals do. They hate and blacklist decent people, conservatives. We used to blacklist communists, and now they've turned around and blacklisted Christians and real Americans. So bad that uh, American white Christian men cannot even have a website in the continental United States and many parts of the world. I've talked frequently about that Daily Stormer website. Just a funny... Pro-America, pro-Christian, sometimes, sometimes a little uh, rough in its language. Um, but very funny, very uh, interesting writing. Can't have a website. They get smeared and blamed for all these different shootings and stuff, and the guy never once advocated for, like, uh, terrorism or anything. Oh, yeah, he kind of 
made a passing comment one time that I that I read about how the Muslims treat the gays kind of showing some support for that but that's how a lot of uh, the Christians feel you know and he would want it to be in an orderly way not he's not for being crazy but you know and he got he got these these lawsuits against him from there was this journalist woman not a Christian who supposedly trolls went after her, the troll army, and it was because of his coverage, supposedly. But he's not responsible for what other people do. Even if he encouraged them, he didn't say, oh, go threaten her or whatever, do something illegal. But whites in America can't have their own, uh, can't have their own websites, can't have their own jobs, can't have their own, even... Even if you're a Jewish guy and you're white enough to be hated, you can't even have your own Clippers team. They'll take away your Clippers team from you because you don't want your uh, V. Stiviano lady hanging out with blacks. Crazy, huh? I'm sorry, I thought this was America. But not anymore. It's an upside-down world. Um, So this guy, somebody responding to Clyde do something, said, where should she work, this lady? who's openly talking about blacklisting decent Americans. She's given a case to anyone she's fired in the past year to sue with cause. Canada has protected classes these people asked for. HR which, not liking your politics, is not actionable. Tammy Tammy Sapitas is a student and member of HRPA. They found this lady's name, right? They doxed her. She says... She won't hire anyone whose politics she disagrees with and will even get you fired. Is this a type of HR practices your association condones? And there was a response from HRPA. HRPA is aware of this video posted by one of its regulated members and does not condone or endorse in any way the statements made about HR practice therein. Further, HRPA is reviewing this matter to determine if there there has been a breach of this Rules of professional conduct. For further information on the complaints, go to blah, blah, blah. Professional complaints, HRPA. HR, human resources. And they try to enforce political correctness so that people don't feel offended in in, uh, corporations, commie capitalist corporations. And you know what offends more than anything? Anything, Christianity. Christianity, by its decency and call to uh, repent, is very offensive. As uh, the Bible even says, the truth of the gospel is offensive to uh, the people who hate truth. And right now, the people who hate truth seem to be running the show in the worldly world. So watch out. Watch out. such a fake world going on. (laughs) Terrible, huh? Let me get to Aaron in Mississippi. Aaron, how are you doing? I'm doing well, Hey, How are you? Fine, thank you. Awesome. Um, Yeah, I had a comment on with the caller from San Francisco. I think Richard was his name. Yeah. Yes. So, all right. If if looks if we're gonna play by that logic, that how dare you tell a man another man how to raise his kid? Well, then, what if you know my kid is showing curiosity towards you know drinking and alcohol, maybe getting a tattoo at the age of seven? I should indulge that, right? Because you know it's just his curiosity, and no one can tell me how to raise my kid. It's like. It's not I don't har- understand that. It's not harming anybody else. <laughs> right. Yeah. I'm not creating a generation of, of children that are going to be sacrilegious and uh, just, I mean, it, it's, I just don't get that argument. Yeah. I understand there are people who disagree with us, but that's a really bad argument to say, how dare you tell another man how to raise his kid? Because that then, then, all right, well, how about this? We're going to play by that logic. My kid wants to uh, identify as uh, a military personnel at the age of seven, so he needs a lot of guns and weapons to do that. 
Nice. So don't tell me how to raise my kid because I got to get him some guns. So, you know, we need to lower the age to own firearms to like seven or eight. Right. Cause you can't tell me how to raise my kid. Yeah. I mean, it's crazy. Are you, a, do you happen to be a father yourself, Aaron? No, but I have three nieces that I'm really close to. And so, you know, they're not in public school anymore because of these crazy people. Like, Do you think you need to be a father to have an opinion on this issue? Or to have, no, uh, just, to be able to see the reality of this issue? <laughs> no, no, just like I, I don't have to be a duck to, to know what a duck is. Right. Know, I don't have to be a dog to know what dogs eat. Right. Yep. Um, it's just, it's crazy that there are people... I mean, I hope you're still listening, Richard. I, I, I just, I can't understand that reasoning that you can't, because you're advocating for illegal acts with, like, with a minor, because that's illegal to do. Like, let's take the drag stuff out of the equation. It's already illegal to have a minor in a bar, regardless. So it's not imposing our will on anyone else. It's like, that's just been the law forever. Yeah. And we've all accepted it. Yeah. But it's it's worse than just a bar because this was a sexualized venue pushing. I right. mean, as as uh, Joe in Idaho said, it had a neon sign that said it's not going to lick itself. Pretty disgusting. Pretty vulgar. Yeah. It, yeah. Quite obscene, I, and, I would say. Right. So. It, it's already obscene, like the whole act in itself. But, you know, even if we were to remove all that, which it's like. It's already pretty bad, but right. you remove the sexualized stuff. It's still illegal to have a child in the bar. I right. don't understand. They got to defend everything that's so crazy about the other. Like, there are people on the right, and a lot of times I talk to them, they'll be like kind of maybe a little wishy-washy with how their views are. Maybe they're like, well, that's okay if they want to be like that. And they, they kind of seem a little more grounded, but it's like the left. It's And I don't like to play this game where we divide each other, but... There is a s- section of our society that does not, they're so tribalistic that they, they have to agree with this or like they feel that their, their peers or maybe that crazy HR lady will call up, you know, Richard's boss and say, well, he, you know, he's for everything that we like, but he does not think we should be sexualizing children in a bar. Yeah. And like, that's what they're scared of. Just stand up for yourself, have some principles and it will work out, you know, seek, Seek the kingdom in his right way, and all else will be added. You don't have to cater to these crazy lunatics. Yeah, it's true. But they do anyways, and that's all I had to say, Hey, uh, I appreciate I it, Aaron. It's, it's good to hear from you, man. Camp. Yeah, likewise, man. You have a good rest of your day. and God bless you, Richard. I, ho- I hope you figure it out soon, man. Well, thanks for the well wishes on on uh, for for Richard. That's kind. Take care, man. You too, man. Oh, I love the music. Nice. <laughs> right on. Just don't listen to the lyrics. <laughs> of the lyrics. I I'm like the only person. So. <laughs> All right. All right. Later. All right. Bye. Um, whew, man. Let me get to uh, Joe in Phoenix, Arizona. Joe, what's up? Good morning, James. Good morning. Well, you know, you know it makes me sick to agree with you ever, but I have to agree with you 100% on that. Richard from San Francisco. Wow! So you agree that it should that it if it's not illegal, it should be illegal, or the law should be enforced against obscenity laws, especially in front of kids. Well, that's um, what I wanted to speak on. It, it, obscenity laws really do vary greatly, jurisdiction by jurisdiction. So yeah. it's very much a, a local issue. Right. But uh, you know, drag queens doing a burlesque show. It's just disgusting, and kids should not be seeing that. And any parent who would take their kid to that is, is abusing their child. That's yeah. As simple as that. It's true, it's man. That. What a shame. So, I just wanted to say that sometimes we do agree, and uh, you're not a totally evil person. <laughs> um, what do you think about Obama, since you tend to defend Obama? He brought up things that now, unfortunately, Republicans are parroting his same line age appropriate sex education and he was talking about i don't know it's i heard a rumor and i don't know if it's true that he was for children as young as uh kindergarten 
learning some of these different things. And I think that it's partly because they want to teach the kids that, oh, if you have two dads, there are such a thing as gay people, and that's okay. I think that that's what was in his mindset with that. Well, one, I don't defend Obama the man ever. I just always talk about his record. Two, I've only read a little bit about that, but um, from what I have read about that, it wasn't trying to um, normalize the whole LGBTQ plus nonsense. It was um, truly age appropriate for, you know, first and second graders, just um, not going into anything explicit or disgusting. I'll tell you, I don't know if, I don't know what your view is on this gun control thing, but they use this rhetoric, this, they manipulate language. You'll notice that they say, first they said gun control, but now people know that gun control just means infringement on the Second Amendment. So then they changed it to gun safety, or now they call it responsible gun ownership. And same thing, they use this term called age-appropriate sex education. And unfortunately, what I call rhinos in Florida who did this don't say gay bill, I call them rhinos because they're allowing this LGBT stuff after third grade. Kindergarten through third grade, no mention of it. You can't be just ask your mother type stuff, type of mindset. But afterwards, they're fine with it. So in my opinion, the Republicans in Florida who are now being boycotted by, like, Disney types, they're no... they're. Just as bad as Barack Obama, kind of, <laughs> saying age-appropriate sex education. I think uh, that well, we're declining. I wasn't saying that. It, it was the bill, but one thing being in the law has taught me to, to be very distrustful of words. Yeah. So we, we can actually agree on that. Um, age-appropriate. What, what, a, what, a, what, a, what does that mean? And it's appropriate a pro- to who? Yeah, right? it's a propaganda word. To get people to think, oh yeah, this sounds reasonable. <laughs> but on the on the whole gun control thing, I mean, there are certain things like you know, mentally ill people having a background check that like ninety percent of Americans agree upon. Those type type of things should be a layup, should be easy. But these aren't. But, <clears throat> but these aren't really the issue with these shootings. I say because we have a. I, I don't know. We have a, an evil society that has taken God out of the schools, men out of the homes, turned men into weak um, See, you can't be reasonable and, and logical, James. So it's we should... It's me when, 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 when you go off on the whole race and politics thing. But I'm um, not um, just sure we agree again. Yeah. But, you know, there's, not, there's, there's not going to be a huge assault on the Second Amendment. It's just not going to happen. Well, we'll see. They've been hammering on it endlessly. So, anyway. There's been, there's been a lot of noise about it, but nothing tangible ever gets done, and it won't. No, man. The, don't, the, uh, the common sense stuff shouldn't, shouldn't, shouldn't scare you. I know, but that's and another buzzword, common sense gun have. reform. Common sense. These people don't have common sense. They're wolves in sheep's clothing who are... The the laws tend to affect the law abiding, and not the people. Yeah, I get that. Sometimes a gun, uh, a crime is committed with a le- lawfully, uh, lawfully bought purchased gun. Yeah. gun, but right. but these, it's it's a mess. It's a mess. All right, let's end on a positive note because we're going to find we'll find something to argue about, but. Um... Have a good day, James. And again, Richard in California, I hope you wake up someday. You're a sick man. Get some help. All right, Joe. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. Uh, super chat on streamlabs.com slash the hate report. John WX25 says, maybe Sharia law for San Francisco isn't such a bad idea. We, we know what they do with Richards, he says. Ouch. Ouch. No, man, I... (laughs) We need Christianity. Commander Kim says, it's always the opposite of what they name it. Age-appropriate sex ed. Affordable Care Act. Patriot Act. It's the opposite of the patriotic. The so-called Affordable Care Act is the opposite of affordable. 
Sex ed is the opposite of quote-unquote age-appropriate. And so-called gun reform is the opposite of common sense. Trump was all for red flag laws. I know. He's a liberal. But he is still the greatest president, notwithstanding that he waved, as Nugget Man pointed out, he waved the rainbow flag. Imagine that. We had a president who waved the rainbow flag one time, you know, as the radical homosexual flag, kissing up, kissing up to the gays, being too nice to the gays, endorsing their radical homosexual flag to a, to a certain extent. Not as extreme as uh, Obama. In fact, he pulled back Obama's things. He, got, he was pulling out the transgenders in the military and in the school uh, bathrooms and all that mess. It was the opposite of care, too. Yeah, it was insurance. The Obamacare. Oh, more like Obama doesn't care. <laughs> uh, terrible. Before I get back to calls, hang tight, guys. <sighs> okay. Let me skip down. I was going to cover these. Oh, you know what? Let me talk about these so-called fit uh, politicians. You know, I, was, I saw Gavin Newsom, the beta governor, on TV, on Fox News, faux news, and his twin, Matthew McConaughey, working for the sleepy Biden administration and their black lesbian press secretary to promote gun control without calling it that. And they're all fit. Psh. Like uh, Gavin Newsom, he was wearing like this long sleeve shirt with like an open uh, thing, open uh, button collar or whatever. And this guy, normally I see him like in a suit. He's all, he's all fit and all exercising and stuff like that. These people, but then uh, spiritually they're weak. And uh, the fittest American politicians, the list from uh, 2014, uh, Aaron Schock, I don't remember him, but Adam Kinzinger. The rhino, anti-Trump guy, former Tea Party guy. He was an Air Force pilot. Three tours in Iraq, two tours in Afghanistan before joining the House of so-called representatives. Married a Latina, I think, in Latin America. Do you like the Latin people? And he saved a woman whose throat got cut by a man on the streets of Milwaukee, wrestled the attacker to the ground and held him until police arrived. He says his workout routine consists of a mixture of weightlifting and running at least five times a week. This was 2014, right? And uh, later on, he was a Tea Party guy. Later on, he got exposed, he exposed himself as an anti-Trump rhino, and he's so-called serving. And the House Unselect Committee attacking um, Trump and Trump supporters, smearing us, smearing the real American patriots and heroes as uh, insurrectionists. So phony, huh? What's up with these guys who are all fit? Are they just acco uh, accommodating? No. What is that word when you're, when you're inept in other ways? But you exercise. Adrian Fenty, former Washington, D.C. mayor. A light-skinned black, I guess. 2009 Men's Fitness magazine named Adrian Fenty one of their 25 fittest men. A list dominated by professional athletes and actors. None of them with as demanding a schedule as the mayor of the nation's capital. And now that... I don't know what this guy's record is, but Washington, D.C. is not well off. But he made the nation's capital more bike-friendly. Oh, good for him. Good for him. Gavin Gruesome, who was lieutenant governor of California back then. He was former mayor of San Francisco, married to that woman at one point who's dating the older woman, who's Kimberly Guilfoyle, who's dating uh, Don Jr. Shameful. Gavin Newsom has been pitching major health and fitness initiatives for years. Mayor of San Francisco, 2004 to 2011, signed laws required city restaurants to put nutrition information on their menus. What a, what a pain, huh? Shape Up San Francisco is his program. Five-year plan to increase access to healthy food. San Francisco rakes among the fit fittest cities in the United States. Uh, yeah. That's like physically fit, maybe. But they're all on drugs and pooping on the streets. 
because a lot of those homeless people are fit <laughs> in certain ways, at least they look it. And then also it's a bunch of gays, you know, the male gays are all into, they're, they're so effeminate that they get, are all vain and into their bodies. Shameful. Barack Obama, very disciplined in his day-to-day -day life, works out regularly, except he smokes a lot, right? Very particular about his health. His health. His, he eats healthy food, healthful food, makes sure his family is very healthy as well, although Michelle ate the ribs and tamales. You do not want to be between Michelle and a tamale, Obama once said. Plays basketball regularly. He's a basketball so-called American, only except he's not really American. Vocal about his opinion that workouts are the best way to bring harmony between your body and mind. George W. Bush. I don't know about that. Mitt Romney. Oh, Mitt Romney was an avid, avid jogger. Who is a jogger? Jogger on the inside, right? Black on the inside. No wonder he supported Black Lives Matter. He enlisted his, his fellow uh, running mate, Paul Ryan, as his personal trainer. Paul Ryan would work out like three, three hours a day or five hours a day, I heard. Paul Ryan, the rhino. Rahm Emanuel, mayor, who was mayor of Chicago no longer. He was under the Obama administration. He's this weird guy. Seriously fit. In a 20... 11 interview with Wolf Blitzer, he enumerated seven-day workout routine, three mornings a week, wakes up early, runs to the gym, swim, swims a mile in a 50-meter indoor pool, chest exercises, runs two miles back to his Ravenswood Manor home. The other two mornings, he rides 25 miles on a stationary bike. Boring. 15-minute turn on the elliptical, weights, 100 sit-ups, 50 push-ups. Saturdays, he bikes 20 miles indoors, practices yoga on Sunday. Knew he wasn't a Christian. <laughs> playing around. What a mess, huh? Bill Clinton, that doesn't count. Bill Clinton's old and decrepit, but he would jog a little. Paul Ryan, a former personal trainer, 6 to 8% body fat, except he's fat, he fat headed, fat brained, works out like a warrior, leads fellow hill, used to lead fellow hill staffers in daily morning exercises. Did the P90X, <laughs> wasn't that run by a gay, I think, pull-up, sit-ups, cardio, karate, jump training, yoga. His father died of heart failure at the age of 55, so he dedicated himself. Wow, just trauma. Andrew Cuomo used to be a boxer. Loves boxing so much, he uh, has boxing equipment in his gym, I mean, in his house. Jogs around two to three hours a week. Whoa, that's a lot. So maybe that's why he got all into himself. Well, actually, I don't want to say that. Uh, Sarah Palin, runner, runs five to seven miles a day. Mother of five, exercise, much a family thing. Yeah, Sean, Sean T. did Insanity. He has a quote-unquote husband. I thought P90X was similar. Could be mistaken. I thought it might have been even the same guy, but I'm probably confused. Anyway, uh, it just made me think of that. Get healthy, but also, like, f as the Bible says, physical training is of some value. At least that's the NIV, right? But spiritual strength, even better. Yeah, Sean T, P90X, dang. See, I know my stuff. Anyway, let me get to uh, uh, DJ North Carolina on the line. How are you doing, DJ? I'm doing great, Hey, How are you doing? Doing fine, thank you. Yeah, um, I know we're beating a dead horse on the Richard guy, but <laughs> I, I, had to say, I had to say something. So, uh, I know everyone, just about everyone who's talking so far hasn't been a father, so... Which, if you listen to this, I am a father. Nice. And I, I just got to say, anything, whether it's schools, social settings, anything like that, there should, nothing sexual should be with children, uh, you know, until they get to the age where, you know, like to the adolescent age, then I'd say it might be a bit appropriate. And it's, uh, I think that's for the parents. Like, like, bring your child to the library. Don't bring them to a, one, a bar, two, these, you know, LGBTQ you know, community settings and all this type of stuff. They shouldn't be exposed to that type of stuff. Yeah. Because, uh, under a certain age, it's brainwashing. It's not exposing. 
Right. Yeah. So, and don't yeah, take them to a library where they're doing the drag queen story hour mess. Yeah, 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 yeah. Take, take them, you know, when it's just books and computers in there and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that's how it should be. Because, like, cause, you know, I'm a, I'm a father of two. Nice. So, uh, and, you know, I'm trying to lead my children uh, in the right way, which, which you should do. So kill, children need guidance. Like, even I have a dog. If I drop some chocolate on the floor, he's going to go running for it and try to lick it. Not What he doesn't know is bad for him. So I have to stop him from doing that. Kids need the same thing, just, you know, they use English. Like you got you to gotta guide them, stop them from doing certain things or being around certain things so they're old enough to understand. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. Are you black or white or, or Hispanic or what? No, I'm black. Okay, nice, man. But, but I just I really don't understand why the the left anytime like I say I want to be conservative Christian I want to live in a nice area I don't want to live in the hood all of a sudden I'm a Uncle Tom and they hate everything I believe but yet these people they say they're so progressive and they just want to be accepting to everybody except if you want to do it the right way if right Christian mom and dad in the house with kids leading them in the right way I I I don't get it. Yeah. The definition of progress, like a progressive, it literally doesn't, like, like, I don't think they know the definition. Yeah, it's true. You know, I was debating, I mean, talk, being interviewed by this guy from New Zealand who cl- made the claim to me that nobody cares what I think when I say that the LGBT thing, that the so-called same-sex marriage is not a real marriage. I'm like, oh, yes, they do. They care. They care enough to try to get, uh, try to get my freedom of speech taken away. They care so much that they try to go after anybody who doesn't, uh, who's a Christian baker who doesn't feel like baking a gay cake for a so-called same-sex wedding. They care, and they don't like you having your freedom to stand on what's right and to tell the truth. They hate the truth and they hate the light. It's very true, man. It's good versus oh, evil. Yeah, yeah you, you are absolutely, you couldn't be more right. That, that's the only thing they hate is the truth, and that's how you know. Because uh, I, I spent four years in the military uh, as a Marine, and just about every mentor I had was like, hey, if you're in a leadership position, and not everybody, but they said if a lot of people don't really like you because you're following the rules and you're always doing the right thing, it was like, just know you're probably right. And in today's day and age, I mean, I think white men, in my position, I hate it more. We, yeah. we, we being black and being conservative and Christian and all that type of stuff. Like, I mean, I, I, I'm highly hated. I get weird looks and I know. all that type of stuff. I'm like, I'm like, what? I'm like, just, I'm like, just go look. Because I just moved to a new area after I got out the military. I said, um, I had to do a lot of research on what job I was going to get and what area I was going to live in. So I used this website called CrimeGrade.org, and that's nice. what I based on where I was going to get a good job. And he can go look at Richard can go look this up where all the areas that are predominantly black, you can, you can do it by research. Uh, they did it by a color code. It was dark red where it was, where it was crime. Wow. And this area where I live in right now was dark green for being a plus for crime. I, I, I don't make this. I mean, I was about to cut. I don't <laughs> make this stuff up. It is, yeah. it is on paper. Crimegrade.org. Go to Atlanta. I'm from near DC. Go to DC. Go to, uh, I don't know where San Francisco, if it's predominantly black, but I know, I know it's a really big city area. And when it's flooded with usually where illegal aliens go or where blacks go, it's, it's just bad areas. Wow. Crimegrade.org. Thanks for the tip, man. I appreciate that. Absolutely. I wish you well, DJ. Great call. Absolutely. All right, you have a good one. All right, you too. Before I get back to calls, I have to cover this. There are... Too many pictures for me to show them all, probably, but I wanted to cover Kirsten Gillibrand. She was once a pretty lady, believe it or not. She's a liberal. She's a Democrat. She's, what, a senator, I guess, from New York? She replaced Hillary Clinton. Did you know that Hillary Clinton, sick Hillary, crooked Hillary, lying crooked Hillary, was a so-called senator from New York. She wasn't from New York. What the what in the world? I don't think she was. Now this lady's looking a little harder, looking a little rougher, looking a little like fatter. Lipstick on a pig. I saw her on faux news, Fox News. 
standing beside another lady, female politician, looking like this chunky old lady with like nearly white hair, wearing a smile, not a real smile. Sad. She has English, Austrian, Scottish, German, and Irish ancestry, and she's a dumb liberal. Fill in the blank. <laughs> uh, sorry, kids. Okay, so I have a bunch of pictures. Let's just kind of wade through these Christian Gillibrand photos. <laughs> uh, I guess I'll just comment on them as, as you're able to show some of these, Chris. <laughs> uh, she's... I'm, I don't know if she's like a, one of those yo-yo diet ladies, but... Uh, there she is, 2019. Oh, uh, that's a mildly attractive photo. You know, she's a little chunky but funky. Nice uh, face. Um, nice enough hair. Nice enough smile. But she's a Democrat, and we all know she's evil. So don't, like, you can kind of tell. Oh, gosh, this one was rough. She actually posted a photo of herself uh, pushing up dumbbells, laying down on a, on a bench, you know, in a weight room. And, you know, her arms, you know, got some biceps on her, but, uh, I don't know if it's, I don't know. Somehow or another, they found a good angle, but her face and head, she looks more like, uh, that, that former governor from, uh, Florida, Rick Scott. Rick Scott, is it? Rick something. Bald guy. Man, she looks sort of mannish. She's showing off. Oh, there she is, pretending like she cooks. And, uh, in this article... They point out that her apron, she's pretending like she's cutting, uh, you know, preparing fish. But it's all awkward, apparently. But she's in the room where she belongs, the kitchen. But she doesn't, apparently, doesn't feel at home there. <laughs> she has an apron on with creases on it. <laughs> does she, how often does she wear that apron? But she did a photo shoot with AP, Far Left Enemies of America Associated Press. Casually preparing. Here she is, kind of younger, I think. Zoom in on that face a little bit. Uh, Vogue, you know, Glamour, Vogue, and all these magazines try to do, drum her up. Oh, possible future presidential candidate. She hated Trump. Oh, no, never mind. She's not that. Well, I mean, yeah, it's just kind of mannish. I don't like that. I'm not a fan of the blazer on the lady. And, uh, she's... Yeah, no, that's not good. But anyway. Oh, this one's a really nice picture, though. This is her from 2010. Like, 12 years ago. L zoom in on that pretty lady, uh, uh, sitting at a desk in her office, playing with these little boys. These are her children. Look how pretty she looked back then. Man, age is rough. Age is rough. Dang. What a mess. So watch out. Don't be liberals, guys. <laughs> I mean, age hits a lot of people like a truck. There she is, being kind of mannish again with her children and her husband. Is that a Christian husband? I don't know. Terrible, huh? Yikes. That's Hillary Clinton with a younger, prettier Gillibrand. The Federalist says, no one likes you, Christian Gillibrand. And that's true. They don't like her. But man, she was prettier. Uh, yeah, she, she tried to run for president. I forgot that she tried to run for president. Politico said she crashed and burned. Uh, and that's a fact. Um, terrible though, huh? Feminist. She participated in the Me Too thing. She smeared... She participated... In the smears against Brett Kavanaugh, participating in the, uh, in the, um, protests with the f f fat lesbian feminist looking ladies. And I use the term ladies loosely. Does not belong in politics. Too rough. Too stressful. It does a number on you. I know that there's a lot of ladies who never entered politics and they look rough and stressed out. Look at how young and pretty she was in high school, in uh, college, I guess this was. Dartmouth College. Oh my gosh. Dartmouth College. Very interesting story. 
I'll, if, if, if you want to just kind of slideshow through the rest, I, or whatever you can. But Dartmouth College, I read about Dartmouth. There she is! Look at that! That's a, her uh, pretty freshman, uh, what? Freshman uh, photo. Honor student and athlete. 1984. Was that high school or was that college? I don't know, but Dartmouth College. It's a Ivy League school if I'm not mistaken. <clears throat> 1972. After women arrived on campus, no school in, in the Ivy League resisted co-education, meaning women in so-called education, as fiercely as Dartmouth, Dartmouth College. Alumni, Dartmouth. <laughs> uh, I'm getting corrected by, uh, by uh, the Fallen State producer. <laughs> I call it Dartmouth. <laughs> Uh, alumni protested the effort and some threatened to withhold donations. Even after women arrived on campus in 1972, hostility persisted. With female students derided as cohogs rather than co-eds. <laughs> Menaced with letters that called them the enemy, objects for sexual contrast, conquest. A dean even awarded a campus prize to an offensive song, Our Cohogs, which described the newly arrived female students as dirty whores. Sorry, kids. Or parents who don't want the kids to repeat that. It was in the lush green... I know, isn't that crazy? Just in the 70s, they had this attitude towards the women in uh, education. I'm shaking my head how far we've fallen. <laughs> Maybe that wasn't the right attitude exactly, but they don't belong in this educa higher education stuff. Her Kirsten Gillibrand... Her maiden name was Rutnik. At least she took a different last name, right? Um, class of 1988, about a decade, she started attending Dartmouth <laughs> as, uh, and graduated 88, I guess. <clears throat> and she ran against this woman, Wendy Long. And they both went to Dartmouth. Gillibrand, a Democrat, was a child of a prominent Albany political clan and a graduate of an all elite all girls preparatory school, arrived in Dartmouth, Dartmouth, <laughs> with an unmistakable confidence and sense of her place in the world. Well, I guess that was false confidence because they did not like her for president, right? She mastered her studies and honors society member, showed daring and intrepidness. Among the earliest Dartmouth students to study in China after it opened to Americans. I saw her trying to sp speak uh, Chinese. It was cute. And excelled at athletics. Co-captain of the Dartmouth squash team. Aw, isn't that nice? Anyway, she's a feminist activist. So wrong. So misguided. What a waste. What a shame. Well... Not good. Oh, there's one. Did you happen to be able to see where she's linking arms? It was from way down towards like the CNN politics uh, slideshow thing. She's sitting down with like this emergency blanket amongst feminist protesters. Dikey looking, you know, lesbian, fat looking female protesters against, I guess, Brett Kavanaugh. What, tw June 2018, what was going on at that point? Was it the fake Me Too movement or, or what? Um, but a, that's a rough looking crowd of, by comparison, she still looked pretty next to them. <laughs> but what a shame. Zoom in on those three big ones with her or two big. Two big ones with her, if you can, there. Yikes. Not good. That is... She's acting like she's... Doesn't in comparison, she looks better now. <laughs> Terrible. Vulgar. Vulgar woman. Stop Kavanaugh. And she was all pretending that it's... She's probably a lawyer slash liar. And she should know that... The accusations against Brett Kavanaugh are not justified. 
but she's an evil lady. And I use the term loosely. Man, what a shame. So sick. She di got directly brainwashed by the CCP, con Chinese con Communist Party, says uh, Viewer USA. Well, she is an evil person, that's for sure. Very true. So sick, huh? Ahead of her, dr a headline on her dropping out of the 2020 Democrat primary for her so called president. At one point, Kirsten Gillibrand looked on paper like a legitimate, if not formidable, presidential candidate, but her campaign never took flight. That's because this is a affirmative action for women who don't even deserve it. And they, uh, they pretended like she deserved it, and so she was misguided, just like Obama thought he deserved what he got, but no, he didn't deserve it either. Last quick thing. Um, let me show this. Uh, Milo is, you know, Milo Yiannopoulos, the ex-gay, right? Is he ex-gay? Is that true? Or is that a grift, as people say? Washington Compost reported Milo Yiannopoulos says he is interning for Marjorie Green. The Queen Marjorie Green. Isn't that nice? Everybody's freaking out about it because, uh... I mean, he has a, uh, he's called a conservative provocateur. Uh, but that's nice. I'm happy for both of them, I guess. I'm not for these women in politics, including Marjorie Green. But, um, she needs help. So, uh, right on to Milo. I wish them well. That's cool. Anyway, guys, this is the... This has been the Hake Report. I appreciate it. Rick in Maine wanted to talk about the parents' role. Children represent parents. And Lord Grimm, I think, also wanted to talk about that mess going on, the attack on the kids, this vulgar stuff. And the rest of the callers, I cannot get to you. This is, we got to end. We're going to have, hopefully, well, we are going to have a Bond Archive Sunday service premiere. So check that out on uh, YouTube or Bond Rebuilding the Man YouTube or rebuildingtheman.com slash church. And hopefully I will see you tomorrow. Going to the dentist today, first time in like 10 years. What a mess. <laughs> Remember I broke that tooth? Gonna have a look at it, I guess. Pray for hate. <laughs> All right, guys, see you later. Take care. <laughs>